Hello. So I'd like to talk to you about a um, AI experiment I did recently called Wide Eyes. Wide Eyes is a Lua script that works in conjunction with the Visual Boy Advance to run um, Game Boy Color games and to try and experiment with them and do some interesting things. The, the sort of central premise behind Wide Eyes is that rather than trying to win the games, um, it uses a, a process similar to how people play games, um, which is that it experiments. Um, so it's not, it doesn't have an overarching goal of knowing what it means to win a game. It just tries to make things happen. And because the Game Boy Color is such an incredibly small, tiny system, it can use a, a sort of stupidly simple way technique to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and start Wide Eyes up and we'll see what he does. So he takes a little while to calibrate, but you can see along the bottom now, this number has started appearing and occasionally it switches over and says novelty instead. And this is Wide Eyes experimenting with the level and, and trying to find out what, what works for him and what doesn't. And it's, it's basically his way of saying whether he likes what's happening or whether he dislikes what's happening. Um, so it's taken a, it took him a little bit of time, but he eventually figured out, okay, I need to go right. Um, so that's good. Gets a little bit caught up on this ledge, but, but he's persistent. Um, not actually very persistent, but in this case, persistent enough. Um, goes right over the ledge, straight into another pit. Has nowhere to go from here though, so he's got to try some stuff, eventually work his way out. And now he's he's on a roll. Going crazy, kills a Goomba, jumps up on this pipe pretty soon. Um, but he keeps on checking behind him. Um, and I'll talk about these systems pretty soon, as soon as he, he finishes up this part of the run. Um, I'll, I'll give sort of a, an overview of how this works. He dies, but, but Wide Eyes can actually save state out of that. Um, and he goes back and he says, okay, I'm going to take the lower road again. And then he stops. The game bugs out. Can't quite make it over this pipe. And in desperation, he just sort of stops doing all input altogether. Freezes up. So what's happening here? Um, game Boy Color games don't have a lot of memory in them. Uh, they're, they're, they're fairly simple. Um, so you can do kind of stupidly simple things with the data. So I mentioned before that Wide Eyes is based around the idea of experimentation and, and trying to get things to happen in the game rather than looking at a specific set of bytes and saying, um, these are the things I care about. This is what winning means. So what Wide Eyes does is it, it takes a dump of the current frame of memory and it takes a dump of the previous frame of memory and it, it literally counts through those and says from last frame to this current frame, how many bytes have changed? And coincidentally, for, for Super Mario Brothers, um, this particular game, it, it works out that if you're standing still and not much is happening, that number will be around 30 to 40. Um, and if you're moving around, obviously, you'll be changing other parts of the, the stage. You'll be jumping, things will be moving around and animating around you, um, music will be playing when you jump, and more of those bytes will change. So Wide Eyes does this sh comparison between the two frames of memory, and it says, okay, if less than 40 bytes have changed, that means nothing is happening, and I'm bored. Um, and if more than 40 bytes have changed, then that means something is happening, and that's exciting to me. And it takes that integer and does all of its input based off of that. The best comparison I could give of how this works is that say I blindfolded you and I gave you a controller and every second I shouted at you in your ear I said nothing is happening right now or ooh something just happened um, and then you had to press buttons on the controller and try and make the game go um, that's essentially what Wide Eyes does so it never looks at the RAM and says what's happening it only looks at the past and says something changed while I had this button down um, 
and and buttons that tend to make things change it biases towards keeping on pressing those which is why it works great for a game like mario brothers because you pretty much just have to hold right and then spam the jump button so let's take a look at another level this is one of wide eyes favorite levels in in super mario world um he loves this level because it has water in it, and Wide Eyes really, really likes water levels. Um, although he has some trouble getting into the water, and and part of that is because Wide Eyes doesn't really have a, a long-term memory, so he occasionally forgets whether or not he's gone right and whether or not he's gone left before. Um, and that's something you're going to notice in this level a lot. Oop! Just died there. Um, it's worth mentioning how the save state system actually works right now. So, Wide Eyes doesn't have a concept of winning or losing. It doesn't know whether or not something is good happening in the game or something bad is happening in the game. And it doesn't particularly care. Um, what it does care about is that something happens. Um, so, Wide Eyes periodically save states as it's playing. And when something happens to it, and, and then nothing else happens to it. Um, when, when the bites stop changing, it occasionally gets bored enough that it stops uh, it stops trying. And it, it just jumps back to the last save state and says, okay, I'm gonna try something else and, and see if I can get not into this state. So it's, it's not so much death that Wide Eyes is concerned about when it's playing this level. It's that after it dies, the bytes stop changing for like a full second, and it gets like zero bytes changed um, in total. And that's really, really boring, so it saves states out of it. Now, there's a consequence of this that we'll see later on, but for right now, let's just watch Wide Eyes play through the level. I mentioned before, Wide Eyes absolutely loves these levels, these water levels, because they're wide open spaces. It can, it can jump up around on top of different enemies, um, it doesn't have to stay confined to the ground, so it has a number of different heights that it can go to. Uh, it, these levels are a lot of fun. Um, the downside of that is that because there's so much to see and do, Wide Eyes doesn't really progress through them very well. Um, so you notice with the first level that, that Wide Eyes was making fairly good progress to the right. And, and in these water levels, Wide Eyes will just as just as eagerly turn around and just go left right back to the beginning of the level. Um, and that's again because Wide Eyes' memory of what's happened in the game is only two frames long, the current frame and the previous frame. So when it starts going left and the screen starts scrolling again, Wide Eyes gets is very, very excited about that and he keeps on going. And this is really a, a theme of the, the whole AI the fact that Wide Eyes doesn't really care about making progress in the game. It doesn't care about what's currently happening in the game or what its current state is. It just cares that the game keeps on going. Um, and one of the consequences, if we drop Wide Eyes at the end of this stage and give him a, a clear path line to finishing it, you'll notice that he gets kind of upset. So he'll enter the doorway and the music will start, and then he'll, he'll save state right out of it. And that's because level endings are really boring. You just sort of sit there, and nothing happens, and this music plays. Um, and eventually, Wide Eyes will decide it's had enough of it, and it'll go left again, and it'll go back and start exploring the world all over again from scratch. And in this point, it's sort of just playing the level in, in uh, reverse. Um, and it's very, very happy to do so. So, Wide Eyes is in a very, very early stage of development. Um, there's obviously more that I'd like to do with him and more than that I plan to do with him. Um, but he was initially designed to be a sort of generic AI to work on multiple games. Um, and one of my favorite Game Boy Color games growing up was um, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. Um, amazing, amazing games. So I'm going to erase the save file out of this from Wide Eye's previous run, and just sort of let him loose on the menu here, and we can see how he does in a more open-ended game. Um, the prediction, you might think, when you, when you uh, have to guess about this, is that Wide Eyes will be very, very frustrated in this game. 
and uh, because it's a game that requires a lot of backtracking, um, it's a game with a lot of just sort of menus sitting around. Um, and indeed, you can see Wide Eyes isn't getting a lot of novelty out of these these menus. Um, but he's getting enough that he's not just save stating out of them or, or giving up and breaking. Um, and then he gets into the, the name. He can make his own name now, which is exciting. He manages to make an account. He goes back in, makes some secrets. Um, doesn't understand much concept of, of entering the numbers. Um, doesn't understand that entering numbers is good. He likes when numbers initially appear because they change, but eh, taking numbers off is just as exciting as putting them on. But eventually he gets through this, gets into the cutscene. Wide Eyes likes cutscenes. Wide Eyes likes cutscenes a lot. Um, and obviously that changes based on his settings. Um, but one of the things that I noticed is, is he likes cutscenes when they start. And, and after a while, when the cutscenes sort of get full 100% loaded into the RAM, uh, Wide Eyes has already seen everything that's coming up on the, the screen, and he gets a little bit bored. But regardless, Wide Eyes gets into the game, immediately goes kind of crazy, and breaks. Uh, so the reason for this is, is that when Wide Eyes doesn't know what to do, um, he tries things. And, and he's based on this premise that when he presses the, the A button, something should happen. And if something isn't happening, then that means there's no point in pressing the A button ever again. Um, and the same goes for the left and right. So he's sort of cycling through these direction keys, and he's saying, nothing is happening, nothing is happening. What's the point? And he, he gets off of that key and goes back. So there's a couple ways that, theoretically, you could fix that. Um, you could force him to press a key for longer when he's experimenting, all of these things. But Wide Eyes doesn't really have a concept of that. He's done most of his runs in Super Mario World, um, and he's not really good at that. There's a, another problem, and this is actually what you would expect going into a Zelda game with, with a system like Wide Eyes, right? Um, you'd expect it to not get the whole concept of scrolling screens around and and what it meant to like backtrack to an area and like be patient and wait for something to happen. Um, but it turns out there's another problem as well. Um, and that happens once you get into the more active parts of Zelda. So let me show you that. This is Wide Eyes later on in the game. Um, I, I went through and got him the sword and I'm and, and booting him up right now. And you'll notice that Wide Eyes little bit more calm now um and that's weird because he's running in the same ai he's got the sword now um and he, he just sort of goes up and um presses himself into this bookshelf plays around with the sword a little bit um but you'll notice at the bottom constant novelty wide eyes is thrilled to be here um and it's because legend of zelda has different animations based on which part of the map you're in so so in a game like mario bros your sprites aren't actually causing much to change in the world there's there's not a huge amount of animation going on you've got maybe like one two enemies on the screen at the same time um zelda has tons of stuff happening all the time you've got in this room alone you've got like 15 sprites and you've got these people dancing around um and Wide Eyes loves this. Wide Eyes is so thrilled with this that it just can't think of anything that it could do to make it any better. Um, that actually ends up being the much trickier problem to solve with Zelda than with other games, is not the backtracking and not getting Wide Eyes to try things. It's getting him to know that some things don't actually matter. Um, Wide Eyes doesn't have a good baseline to set to say um, what is actually changing in the world around me. It just knows that something is changing. Um, and it can be very, very easily overwhelmed with noise. Um, it can be very, very easily overwhelmed with repetitive notions or motions like you're seeing right now um, with the sword. Wide Eyes is thrilled with the sword. Um, all of these things sort of work together to make a... a, a 
an AI that has almost a sense of ADD, um, a, a sense of short-term memory loss on top of that, and, and a very sort of optimistic view about anything that's happening in the game. Um, but I like that about White Eyes, to be honest. Um, I want to keep on working on him. I want to get him to eventually be able to play these games um, and not just fiddle around in them. But there's a sense of charm to the whole thing um, that I was very, very happy about the way that, that this experiment turned out. So if I end up developing it more, and, and I plan to, um, I'll probably do some more video clips like this, um, trying him out on different games, seeing what he does, seeing what techniques work well for other games, and, and so on and so forth. Um, in the meantime, though, this is Daniel Shumway. Um, from Latin for Imagination, and this has been Wide Eyes.